It's Tech Tuesday, a major reason to turn on your VCRs every morning. Yes, I'm talking to you, certain members of the faculty. Number five, Sapphire is not a big name like ATR and NVIDIA, but they're making some pretty big news with the Radeon HD 5970. The fastest graphics card available, scoring 22,000 on the PC Mark Vantage tests, which for those of you who don't know what a PC Mark Vantage test is, which is me up until I looked it up on Wikipedia last night, it means it's really fast. It has four gigs of memory and runs so hot that it needs three fans and a giant heatsink. I don't think that I had to mention that this thing is a total monster. Yes, it will destroy any game you throw at it, but for $700, it better. The 5970 isn't available just yet, but expect ATI and NVIDIA to be putting out something close to this in the near future. Also expect anyone who is willing to spend the money to buy it to disappear as they really do have no life. Number four. 600 million tons of ice were just recently discovered on the moon's north pole. I don't know where 600 million tons of anything could hide for 40 years, but this ice seemed to have pulled it off. A NASA mini radar thing discovered the supply during a passover of an Indian satellite it was attached to. The good news is now that it is another possible source of water and fuel if there is ever a moon base developed. The ice could be drilled and mined to get oxygen to burn or distilled to drink by future inhabitants of a moon base. So we have the water, now all NASA needs to do is get a few billion extra dollars to start shipping houses to the moon. Number three, Project Gustav is not a secret government plan or a new lab experiment. It is what the guys tasked with making Microsoft Paint usable for real artists have been up to. MS Paint is extremely basic, limiting the use to messing around with a paint bucket tool or somehow making crazy art things like this. Artists looking to go digital with their creations are held back by the cost and complexity of programs like Photoshop and other professional drawing apps. Project Gustav takes the simplicity of paint and adds in a level of depth by creating new software to mimic real color blending and brush technique via awesome visuals and seamless touchscreen and tablet integration. It will hopefully open digital art to the not-so-tech-minded. Now they should work on something that makes the tech-minded artistic, since I'm still stuck at stick figures. Number two. Last week I brought up the possibility of Steam coming to Mac, and then worried if any games were coming along with Steam. Well, it's good news this week. After some teasing from Valve, it seems Left 4 Dead, Team Fortress, Half-Life 2, Portal, and Portal 2 are all coming to Mac. That one is definitely my favorite graphic. Then Game Informer confirmed Portal 2 for the Mac in their latest issue. So all this hype is coming from Valve basically confirms Steam for Mac and finally some good gaming for the platform. What better than one of the most legendary game developers and publishers to start the push for Mac gaming? Anything to stop the spread of Farmville. Number one. Apple may be getting some love from Valve, but they are out for blood with everyone else. Apple recently filed suit against HTC for infringing on 20 separate patents that Apple had on mobile phone tech. Everything from graphics processors to screen dimming to the little icon used to slide to unlock deal. This is clearly a way of getting to Google and Android since most of the patents deal with software on a phone rather than the hardware. But Apple, for good reason, is not too willing to go after Google just yet. They are sticking with the passive aggressive style for their attack on Amazon. Apple has been convincing music labels to pull their support for Amazon's early release deals. Amazon sometimes allows CDs that will sell big to come out a day early for a low price to get the advantage. Apple was none too happy with this strategy to get sales, so they have been lobbying major labels to stop allowing this to keep iTunes on top. Expect both of these battles to go ugly as the ebook market explodes and Google starts to respond to Apple's aggression. Expect most normal people who don't have an iPhone, Android phone, ebook reader, or don't even pay for music, resulting in them not really caring. That's all for this week. Become a fan on Facebook and see Tech Tuesday on YouTube at youtube.com slash techtuesday. Now stay tuned for our regular scheduled Fade to Black.